Good evening. We will call the Historic District Commission meeting for Wednesday, September 27th to order. First on the agenda, approval of minutes from August 23rd, 2023. Kim, do we have any comments on the... Any comments or questions? Any motion? Motion to accept as presented. Motion to accept as presented second. and a second by Richard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next on the agenda, a projects of minimal impact report. Michelle. All right, 28 Lincoln Street uh, came in for an application to install a cedar picket fence, and that was approved. Thank you. Next on the agenda, public comments by visitors. If any visitors would like to come up to have any comments, please do so at this time. Seeing there is none, we will move on to old business. Any old business before the commission tonight? Seeing there is none, we will move on to new business. First on the agenda, Avon LLC is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to replace siding at a property located at 72 Markin Street. Michelle. Yes, so the applicant is proposing to replace vinyl siding on the front and right side of the building. Applicant has uh, provided a sample of the hardy plank, which I will pass around to uh, the board members. Uh, and this is ready for review. All right, thank you, Michelle. Do we have any applicants who would like to speak about the project tonight? All right, we'll have you come up and just state your name, but make sure the little green light is on the mic. Hello, my name is Odell, and we're all using the Philadelphia and we're here to replace siding in the building. Uh, first, thank you very much for allowing us to do the tenders. The oh, one sec. Okay. Now it's on. <laughs> All right. And uh, the whole, we want to change the front of the business. Is uh, The siding we have now is really start to crack and there is uh, holes everywhere. And it's really time to change it. And once we change it, it's going to, and which we're going to change the, the, the sign too on the top. We're going to put a brand new one. So once we approve, really it's going to look nice for the business and for the, for the city. So we just want to. Would luck you guys to approve us so we can go ahead and start working. Thank you very much. Right. Actually, if you want to just stay in case they have any questions for you, okay, I'll open it up to questions for the applicant. Tim. Your, your plan is to just change the sidewalk side, based on your application, the sidewalk side and the right side, looking at it from the street, the, the right side of the building. We're going to change the white side, yes. It's the front and the side, like those right. two sides. So how far back on the right side? All the way to the door, to the entrance of the building. All the way to where the previous addition to create the bar was installed? No. no not no, that no, no. far? No, not this far, no. Of the type that's of the color, ma'am. Just the color. So yes. the front is going to be this color and the side is going to be this color. Yes. The whole what color. do you mean by the, fr the whole front going to be this siding? Yes. That's the color, yes. Kim, your mic. The so the whole front and the whole side are going to now be this darker color? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Follow up. This is the that you're talking about? Yeah, all the white side to look. You can approach. Yeah. So just past the entrance door to your store, I mean to your pizza place. Yes, and all the front. And all the way to the front corner and then down the sidewalk. Yes. But not the alley. No. Richard, did I see you have one? Is there going to be any trim around the windows or corners of the building as well? I think there will be, right? We're going to do a trim. Yeah, we're going to trim it. And what size is that trim going to be? I don't know what size exactly. We just we already have a white trim on the side. We're gonna move this one. We're gonna put a black trim. We haven't decided about the color of the trim, but we're gonna move the white one and see what kind of color can go with the with the siding. Okay. Um, 
you know, we, we really don't have a lot of say over color, so the color isn't as much of a concern to us. I was just curious if it's going to have trim or not. Yes, we're going to trim around the windows and on the side. Only one trim will be on one side. Is, is it just going to be like a typical four inch trim or? It's already there. I already did the windows. No, we didn't trim the windows yet. Did you trim the windows? On the outside? Sir, if, if you want to be part of the conversation, you'll have to step up to the podium. He's the one who's doing the work, that's why he knows more better than me. Okay. And please state your name, sir. My name is Daryl LaJoy. Probably heard of me, but <laughs> it's for the viewing at home public, sir. Huh? On, this is televised, so we want to okay. make sure they know. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing now. They can hear you, so when we ask the question, they can hear your answer. Okay. So, um, can you kind of tell us if you're using the site, um, the trim that's already there, or you're going to be mimicking what's already there? No, the trim that's there is going to stay. What I'm doing, and what we, what I did last week was put new windows in with a nice casing on it. Right, but he's worried about the corner boards for the site. Okay, the corner boards, because he has a high traffic area, um, he wanted something sturdy. So uh, I propose PVC wood as a corner. And I'm going to paint it black or whatever color he wants. Um, so when people walk out, they don't damage it. So, so what size is that trim going to be? Five inch. Five inch. Okay, fair enough. Just yep. I mean, it's I don't know who did the siding initially, um, but it's cracked, <coughs> it's ugly, and it's going to make his business look so much nicer. I can't argue that one bit. I. No, I it's the truth. I've been doing this a long time, <laughs> you know. I understand, um, and this is to either who wants to answer the example. So I want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. So the siding that is there, it's making it look like it's individual rock. Uh, yes. I, I don't really know what to call this. I even know who chose that. <laughs> um, yeah. But so what you're proposing is to do the long strip so it looks more like a clabbered. Is that correct? No. Okay, so what are you looking to do for this it's siding? Board and batten. Okay, so you're doing a board and batten style. Board and batten. Okay. So that sample, okay, is going to be it's four by eight strips, and then I'm going to batten with the same color. Okay. You know what board and batten is? And I'm sure you do. Um, and it's going to be <laughs> forever. <laughs> so this is actually going to stand vertically. It's a four by eight sheet. Is that what you said? Four by like, uh, like a sheet. Like a rock. piece of plywood, only that material. Because right, this just looks like six inch clapboard. That's a well, clapboard example, but that's the I material just, he's using. I just okay. got that sample. It took me a lot of work to get that sample, to be quite honest, um, just for the color. Okay. Because Ed wanted to, you know, make his awning look nice. So I got him a sample, and I, in today's world, <laughs> we all know <laughs> it's not easy. Okay. Any follow-up questions or any new questions? One follow-up. Yep. So that corner board is going to be Azac, or it will be. Uh, it's going to be Azac. I mean, um, Azac corner. Oh, uh, PVC. PVC. Yeah, there's different brands. Out right. There. Will they be dated to receive the board? Uh, absolutely. Thank you. I just wanted to kind of refer to the original um, HDC uh, review on this building uh, for the integrity. It said poor integrity due to the application of vinyl siding, replacement doors, and windows, rear addition, and complete remake of original facade. With that being said, I think this is an improvement either way for me. Um, no offense, I order from you all the time, love you, but don't particularly love that siding that was chosen originally. So, um, what year was that, too? By the way, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, so I'm actually in favor of this, but I'm curious where the others stand. Huh? Hmm? 
Oh, the survey was done in, oh, 2013. So it's where the they went around and um, evaluated each building within the historic district just to say how the buildings are, you know, being upkept and give us some information around those buildings. So okay. I think he was asking if we knew when the siding was, and it looks like in 1994 they gave a certificate of appropriateness to install an awning. So I'm assuming that the siding was was predating that. Correct. That, that siding's been there as long as I can remember, and I was pretty small the first yeah. time I've been through the city. So. I vaguely remember a diner sitting there. But yeah. To a long time ago. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> huh? A long time. The siding's been there a long time. <laughs> Predates 1994. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other comments or questions? Richard? I, I would just agree that, you know, this obviously the way this building looks now it doesn't really conform to the historic district and the building itself even though it claims that it's a contributing factor it's you know really doesn't play the part and you know i just think the whole shape of the building kind of stands out and doesn't really fit in anyway so you know I, I don't think we can do much to make it really fit in and do much but this is certainly an improvement and I have nothing against these improvements I, I think it's I think it's a welcome improvement and I can't can I say it. one thing sure. I've been a contractor in this city for a long time but I left three years ago but Ed because he trusts me called me and I did not even think about it being in the historic district so I priced it all out and he picked the product. I mean, he's worked hard. Well, I think so far the consensus is we like what you picked so far. <laughs> so any other comments or questions? George. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept as proposed. Okay. We have a motion to accept. Sorry. We have a motion to accept as proposed. Do we have a second? second. We have a second. I'll, I'll second with some conditions. All right, let's, uh, I actually saw Adam second first, but let's open it up okay. to conversation then. Sure. I would make the condition that the PVC trim corners be included in this, that the siding shall be installed just past the entry door to the restaurant, yeah. that the siding shall be board and batten, first installed with 4 by 8 sheet of hardy plank, then covered with battens on top of it, and the corners of the PVC corners shall be dadoed so the edges of this Four by eight sheet siding shall not be exposed. Further discussion around the um, suggestions uh, Tim is adding to the motion. And the PVC was said to be five inch? Yep. Five inch and four inches? Well, four and a half, whatever. Yep. Four and a half, four and a half. I'll amend that to include that dimension. Further conversation? George, it's your motion. Do you want to amend your motion? Sure. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Um, Adam, do you want to amend your second to include? I do. All right. So let me make sure I got all of this. I will, um, I will make sure you get a written copy of that. Okay. Um, but just for we make sure I can understand it, we're doing PVC corners, four and a half inches, um, siding, board, and batten. And then I hardy can plank. get the particulars yeah. around that board and batten. The board and batten like is a four by eight sheet of hardy plank with battens installed on its surface. The corners shall be dadoed. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't write that fast. All right. <laughs> board and batten installed on surface, yes. Or battens installed on surface. Yep. Then? Um, the corners, the shall be dadoed so no ends of the hardy plank siding be exposed so, so no end of hardy plank to be exposed yeah the edges you know like you no know, j channel they're mm -hmm. cutting in it and did you already write down the uh p uh the siding shall extend just past the entrance door no, that is what i'm missing siding Shall extend what? Past the entrance door to the restaurant. But not far. <laughs> I said just past, yeah. Uh, just past, yeah. All right. We will confirm, but 
Um, all right, so we have a motion and we have a second with those conditions stated. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passes with those conditions. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, Kurt Stallsmith is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to replace and expand a covered front porch at a property located at 15 Maple Street. Michelle. Yeah, so the applicant is proposing to replace uh, deteriorating covered front porch with pressure treated covered front porch and expand the porch uh, from six feet wide to 10 feet wide. Uh, staff did reach out to the applicant to know to let them know that this expansion would require a van variance um, because it's uh, construction within the 15 foot setback. Um, the applicant, the HDC shall render a decision within 35 days. If the HDAC accepts the application as complete, uh, we do have some information regarding the historic survey for this. Um, and porches are index or character defining features. The historic applications that went before with this application was in uh, 2012 for a certificate of appropriateness to replace rotted deck boards, which was approved in 2022 for a certificate of appropriateness to install roof mounted solar was also approved. All right, thank you, Michelle. Do we have any applicants who would like to speak about this project? And when you come up, just still make sure the green light's on and then state your names for the record. Uh, my name is Kurt Stallsmith. I am the property owner. I'm Adam Shaw. I'm the contractor on this project. Is there anything you would like to add to what we just heard? Uh, give us a little more information or? The last time I spoke to Kurt, we spoke about the railing height and the railings that are on site right now are not to code in height. They're 22 inches tall. Okay. And there was talk about them not meeting conformities to the historic um, vision or you know like as people go by they don't look the part um, if we were to do square so I found a PVC alternative that will match what's there and it will also meet code um, so we can install those and not have any issues okay. down the road <laughs> and Tim can correct me if I'm wrong but if it was something existing you can get grandfathered so you don't have to meet code but I believe that is depending on how much Correct. Structures within the historic district in a design or on the historic register, and this house qualifies for the historic district, uh, meet certain exceptions in code. It goes falls under the existing building code under historic features. Those railings can stay just the way they are. They can be replaced to look just like they look. Okay. Um, there, there's an exception to maintain that historic integrity. So in those areas, the intent of that is to not change things, just to keep them up. Makes sense. So if I get a 36 inch railing section, I should be just, I can just cut it down to match what the height is there originally? If it's That'd approved, that would be a potential, yes. Okay. It, but we'll discuss that. Okay. Yeah. But just so for informational yeah. purposes, you don't sure. have to replace it or go higher to meet code or um, change the pattern or the width kind okay. of idea is what that's um, stating. But I will open it up to the board for questions so they can, yeah. Kim. So the proposal is you're gonna take the rounded section of this porch that kind of runs along the side of the house and make it 10 feet bigger. Um, no, it's going to be extended to 10 feet wide total, not 10 feet more onto that. So the whole porch is going to be 10 feet wide? I believe so, yes. Overall, overall, overall yes. Feet. It's about seven and a half feet right now. So it looks like there's a separate roof and kind of this really pretty rounded wrapping around and you're going to have the same. It's just going to be a bigger, wider roof. It's going to look exactly the same. So the roofing section right now doesn't really meet uh, the way it's flashed right now. It really doesn't do it for it. It's all rotted off. Um, my proposal was to go up to the roof line of the existing structure and carry that over and extend that four pitch down to the front of the porch so it all looks equal plane. Um, and then across the front of the structure, you'll see a 12 inch fascia board. We go down with the same four pitch with a hip valley on the corner to square that section off. And then we'll, we won't have that rounded front, but um, doing a rounded front now with the way the materials are, is gonna be extremely costly and a lot of time. So I don't know if we had an exception to square that off or not. So this would dramatically change the profile of this building because you're essentially saying we want to make it bigger, we're going to change the roof line, 
and we're going to get rid of the curve, which I unfortunately really feel like is a defining feature of this house. Um, totally understand the, the curve on the porch is uh, uh, a feature for sure. Unfortunately, the porch is in pretty tough shape as of right now and is very deteriorated. I would be willing to try and recreate um, a rounding to the porch uh, going forward. I think we just have to kind of price that out is what that looks like. Um, but I'm not opposed to trying to round it as well. It's just trying to preserve too much of that porch is going to be difficult. It is in tough shape. Um, quick question around that. Yep. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to extending it out. It's at about three feet from overall what it is now. Um, but I do kind of agree with Kim, but I'm curious, is the actual um, rounded, I'm trying to figure out how to pray this well, the, um, the railing that's rounded, is that in good shape at this moment in time? No, all the balusters and the railing tops are completely rotted out. Okay, and, and what about where the is. roof line kind of is? That what that rounding, so none of that it's rounded part is structurally unsound. It could fall at this point. Okay. The fascia boards are pulling away from the soffits, so it's because I was thinking, gone. like, <laughs> if those were in good shape, you could like move that over, extend it where it could kind of go to that opening part. But if they're not in good shape, I think at this point, if we were to even put a bottle jack to jack up the existing roof, it would crumble. It, okay. It's full of water, All pretty right. dramatically. <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> um, anybody else? Tim? Um, to be frank, I'm not supporting this application, and I apologize to be that frank. Um, the, the features of that porch are very similar to one of just up the street from yours at the end of that end of Maple Street at the corner of Maple and Pleasant? I believe so. Prospect. Whatever. Um, they had a round porch, very similar problem, very similar de degradation. Their round was a detail in the middle of a straight section that almost created like a balcony off the porch. Um, they too were struggling with being able to recreate it and they eventually did. Um, this is a feature of this house that is enlisted in the, re in the survey um, as a nice example of Greek revival. It's very common to the district. Uh, its integrity is very good, an increasingly rare example of house retaining its original wood clapboard siding. Um, and if you may have not have known, this house is, was proposed to have been moved here in 1877 as originally to have come from a from Berwick. So beats me how they hauled it up the hill, but um, anyway, the railings, the curved railings, the curved roof, the, the dimension of those ballasters, all of it speaks to a very significant feature right down to the vertical uh, lattice. Um, on the front part of the application that I don't know if you received in your packets, but it's part of the standards of review, and I'll review them for you. Uh, section F renovations. Rehabilitation work shall not destroy distinguished qualities and character of an architectural feature. Alterations should be held to a minimum. Deteriorated architectural features should be repaired rather than replaced whenever possible. In the event replacement is necessary, new materials should match the materials being replaced in design, texture, and other visual qualities. Would you say your application meets these standards as far as the structural standpoint of this goes I asked you about the appearance uh, so I'm, that's what I'm saying so there's some exposed areas that are bare wood if we were to replace it with the same bare wood that's there that's not pressure treated by any means is is that what you're saying we have to do I'm <laughs> saying that deteriorated architectural features should be repaired rather than replaced but in the event replacement is necessary mm -hmm. The materials should match being replaced in design, texture, and other visual qualities, not necessarily what they're made out of. Just smooth white is what they would be appearing as if we used PVC in those areas? Yes, I would agree with that. So you would agree that your design, your proposal, does not match our criteria? I'm saying that if we were going to put white PVC back on, it would match the gloss white paint. But your there. application was for a hip roof, extending it to 10 feet, 
would that application, the way you presented it, would it match this design criteria? No, it would, it not. would not. Correct. Thank you. Richard? Yeah. So I, I do agree with Tim on, you know, what he has to say about the appearance of it. Uh, I'm not opposed to enlarging, you know, enlarging the porch, but I still think the roof should be a separate roof, not follow the roof line down. Um, you know, keeping the turn balusters like it has now and the round columns rather than a squared off because obviously anybody can go out and get the cheap Home Depot square stuff and it just changes the whole appearance. Mm -hmm. That's just what we're trying to prevent, keep that character that this house does retain so much. You know, I, I completely understand that nearly all the wood there is rotten. I've seen the sag in that house. I live right around the corner. I drive by it often. I'm amazed it hasn't fell looking at it. I can see it just driving by. So, you know, I, I understand that it does need to be replaced. It's just, it's the appearance. Try to maintain that appearance that's there. Um, I, I think that if you could just keep that railing looking like it does, you know, I don't care if it's pressure treated painted white, whether it's PVC that is white, painted white, you know, it, it's not so much the material, as long as it's a good durable material, that way you get, you know, a good lifespan out of it rather than just cheaper wood, let's say. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I, I think keeping the roof line so it's a separate roof from the main roof of the house would be the key thing for me. And if you can keep a curved corner, I understand maybe the radius might have to change a little bit or something, but, you know, if you could keep a curve there, that would certainly, you know, get my approval. Richard, I think in that case, um, if we do frame with like a multi-angled corner, we can wrap a PVC trim to actually round out throughout the PT framing below it. Um, and it would still appear to be round, but the substructure would actually be rigid enough to support the weight of it all. I don't know that, um, and the other board members can talk about how they feel, but as long as the appearance, I wouldn't necessarily care so much about the substructure, as long as the appearance um, mimics what's similar now. Um, I definitely mean mimic Richard. I'd like to see this porch kind of stay separate than do the hip roof, but I will say that I also don't want you to run into issues later on where we all know flat roofs cause problems, there's more leaking. So even if you had to angle it just a wee bit to get some shut off of that roof, I'd be okay with that, just not a full roof coming up to the meeting the other roof line. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm in agreement. I agree that, again, I already stated, I'm okay with widening that entrance on the side of the house, that part of the, but I tend to agree where if we want that rounded appearance and it did sound like you were willing to do that part. Um, and I agree with Richard, if none of those columns are salvageable, I'm- They're all, you could put your finger through most okay. of them. Okay, um, I agree that we would want like um, the square at the top and then the rounded below, because again, that just mimics the style and the time frame. And I believe in real wood, they're definitely out there. And if you end up doing a mix of real wood with the PVC, I'd be in favor of it just as long as it all looks cohesive at the end of I it. I have a distributor that will make us fiberglass ones to match basically whatever we have. And okay. we two-part epoxy join those, and then we sand and bondo the seams and then paint them white, and they look like they never were touched. So okay. Um, I've, I've already done a little bit of digging onto this just in case we did come into this Perfect. issue. Perfect. So. <laughs> That's what we want to hear, that you did your I've, research. I've done and some that research on balusters as well that yeah. would match. So. For alternatives. Um, I'll go to George and then I'll go to Richard. Um, the deck in the, the going to be pressure treated. That that was the plan originally. I don't know if I mean we're trying to keep everything wood. You know everything there that's is there is wood, and we could go to fir. But uh, we're going to be gonna, ten years it, down the road doing the same exact. It'll be painted though. Yeah, and what's there is all just untreated wood, and it's yes. pretty punky. There'll be no bare wood showing anywhere. So everything will be painted. How up. about the skirting that's on there? Uh, the skirting that's existing there is obviously gone at this point. Yeah, but yeah. Um, that deck sits extremely low to the ground, too, and a lot of it's just sitting on rock. Yeah. Um, so in the proposal, I had added the Diamond Pier 3660 um, pound rated footings to be installed uh, to support that roof line. Um, those are really minimally invasive as far as digging goes. We don't have to dig any crazy areas. Um, put those all in underneath all the new columns and six by six posts to go up to the structural needs. And then we'll wrap those with the rounded column um, wraps and fiberglass if that's what we need to do. Oh, nice. 
Like, so would there be a skirting that goes back on? Yeah, down to the ground. We'd probably end up doing the PVC though. What's there is white and completely yeah. junk. So we just need to replace that back yeah. to what's there. And and the other question I have, just obviously, if you expand this out, it sounds like you might need a variance for that. Do you know how far you are currently from the property line? I did measure it. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I want to say at least 20 feet, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So, so if it's seven feet wide now and you add three feet, you might not be within the 15 feet. Might not. I think there was a confusion on it being an additional 10 feet onto it, and I'm not planning on doing that. Ah, uh, gotcha. It's okay. Just, just the way the material is, like if we're going to get eight footers or 10 footers, we're going to have minimal waste out of a 10 footer if we go to nine feet from the seven feet to add two feet. And then our soffit overhang can still go eight inches beyond, which it is currently. We don't have that splash back onto the wood deckings. And the other question is, what's the time frame on doing this? Is are you going to try to do it before winter, or is that it that was the ideal goal? <laughs> I woke up and saw frost on the truck this morning, and I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> I got to get Kurt's deck done. Seems so. like seems like winter's coming fast this year. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, as far as the roofing on that now, it's a rolled asphalt, and it's been coated. I don't know how many times. Is there anything required for us to put back down on that roof if we do end up going forward with this project? I would probably say not from this board yeah. because My you didn't have a slate roof or anything like that that you're replacing. I think we would be. So if we were to do an EDPM rubber on there, we could get away with that as long as it matches what's there currently. I'll let other There's board members. Yeah. You probably some. still have to apply for a second HDC application, but you wouldn't come to the board. It'd okay. probably be handled administratively. Okay, yeah, there's some serious flashing issues on that currently that need to Not be addressed. Not too so. surprised. <laughs> um, and I had a quick question on that skirting. So um, the skirting, you will, even if it is PVC, understanding it's so low that it will be those same vertical. Yeah, there's, like I think there's a one, by, like one by threes currently or is somebody, you know, something's tucked in there and it's just kind of post to post and just we just nailed in there. I don't want to so. see it like moved and changed to lattice or anything like nope, that. No, it'll all be vertical upright flats same. like it is currently. Okay. What's your intent for the ceiling of the porch? Uh, so what's on there now is V-match, edge and center bead pine. We're going to just do clear um, one by six V-match and then paint it white to match the existing. Thank you. Any further questions? Or do we have any motions? Richard? I, obviously, if you're trying to get this done, it'd be much easier if you had an approval tonight. Yeah. Um, I'd be willing to make a motion that as long as the roof stays below the eave of the house, even if you bring it up close, almost touching the eave, just so that it stays a separate roof, I would be okay with that. I'd be willing to make a motion that way. That would give you as much slope as possible, and if you still have to use rolled roofing, I'm fine with that. Um, as long as the balusters are turned you know round balusters and posts similar to what it has here now i certainly would approve this and as long as you can have some sort of a rounded corner that's that's my stick my stickler points i guess on this and i would certainly be willing to try to make a motion and with those details described into it um i I'm only one, so I hope the others will go along with that and try to get you an approval tonight. But that's that's my mindset here, and I'm going to do my best to make that motion unless there's other questions beforehand. I would second that motion for, for exactly that. Those are the concerns that I have. I want a separate roof. I still want the rounding, and I definitely want turn balusters rather than the Home Depot stock square stuff. Yeah. Those, to me, are the defining features of this house, not Friend the width. Friendly amendment to the motion? Sure. It's not a motion yet, but friendly amendment. Okay. Um, for conditions, the lattice work underneath the deck when replaced shall be vertical. The fiber columns shall be Lattice work, or are we calling that the skirting? It, it, you, either one you okay. want to call it. <laughs> Replacement columns, if fiberglass shall be made and created to match the profile of the current columns. Richard, any? The, I'm not, oh. I'm waiting for you to finish writing. Thank you. 
The railings and balusters shall be mimicked in profile and height if new material is chosen. Hold on. Mimicked in height and what? Profile. Thank you. Okay. The roof shall remain with the current radius, whether expanded or not. The roof shall stay separate and not attached to the existing slope roof. Mm -hmm. V-match pine ceiling will be installed to replace current V-match ceiling. The crown molding. Old Sorry. V-match pine ceiling to be installed to match mm -hmm. existing. Crown molding profiles shall be matched regardless of material chosen. In short, you can make the whole thing out of PVC as long as it looks like this when it's done. That's the plan. Yep, that's <laughs> no complaints on that. We want it to look like the same that it's had for the last hundred and who knows so many years and just not rot away again and look like an eyesore, essentially. <laughs> Tim, any other? Suggested changes? That that's my f amendment to the original motion. If so, nope. accepted. That, no, that's exactly what I had in mind with my motion. Tim's just very good at putting into actual words. And and we understand why we're having to do this now. Yes. Yep. I'll second the motion. Well, he hasn't officially made it yet. Are yes. you making a motion yes. with am, said um, arrangements yes. for conditions as previously discussed. Yes, that is my motion with all the pieces that Tim added into that. Yes. Okay. And then we still have a second I'll by Kim. Yep. All right. Any more discussion or are we ready for a vote on this? Tim, any more discussion? No. Ready for a vote. All right. All those in favor with said conditions? Uh, Aye. Aye. All right. So the motion passes. Um, if you, this will be written out, so you will get all those conditions, but I think you kind of heard what we need. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a cool project. So. Okay. <laughs> I like the old stuff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for doing what, doing this project. Too. Yes. All right. Next on the agenda, Paul. Mackey is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to replace and frame a door and relo relocate gas lines at property located at 66B High Street. Michelle. Yeah, so the applicant is proposing to install uh, and frame a new door to the rear of the building and relocate the gas lines for the building. Uh, I don't see uh, the person that was representing the application, Paul, here tonight, and I don't know who's here on behalf of the applicant, um, but we don't have a signature saying that anybody else can represent the application, so. Are you here to talk on this application? Yeah, sorry. Hi, all. Good evening. So did you say you're here to talk on this one? Uh, not much. Uh, just uh, I'm ready. I just came across uh, to discuss about this topic. Okay. Yeah. So are you in a butter or are you here to talk about the property and this? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can convey the messages to us if anything is required. I can okay. do that. Yeah. Can we hear what he has to say or do we need the approval of the applicant? We need the approval of the applicant, I would say. Okay. That he's, I mean, we could maybe listen to what they have to say, but I would say we should continue the application. Okay. So the issue is because the applicant didn't say somebody else would be speaking on their behalf. Okay. Um, we really can't uh, move forward with the application and ask questions without that approval from them. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, I think we're going to have to table unless the board wants to move forward without any questions. I have a statement, not necessarily the one piece of the applicant 
about moving the gas lines. Um, I'm not sure they need, as a utility, needs our approval to move those. I was going to say. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Right, so move the gas lines, but everything else we need the signed applicant or the the owner agent that he said would be here whose name was paul paul mckey yeah and you're not paul i'm not paul i'm robbie okay so um i think we're going to move to table this um because we can't get the information we need on the applicant so okay. it will move to next month or do we uh, have to uh, i have a i have a, yeah so point of order the only way we can table is with the applicant's approval, correct? And we don't have an applicant or an applicant's agent. Correct. I'll motion to deny. All right. Um, all right, let's get through that. We have a motion to deny. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So what happens is because the person on the application wasn't here and didn't give approval, we can't ask questions, so we're denying it because we can't ask those questions, but okay. you can re-submit um, and come to the um, next HDC meeting. You'd be heard under old business. Okay, go But ahead. please make sure that the applicant gives you authority to speak on this or that he needs to come himself. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah. Have a great evening. No. Okay. One, uh, one like would appreciate all. It's really good. First time I'm just seeing across, and not in India. I'm from India, actually. But the way you people are asking the questions and everything, the way uh, the discipline about how the people residents, it's really uh, great. Oh, I appreciate you. you all, yeah. It's something we should be learned from across the globe, <laughs> <laughs> which I feel. Thank you, appreciate <laughs> Thank that. You, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. Bye. All right, next on the agenda, workshop business. Any workshop business? Michelle. I have one item. Brandy Laughlin, who works for New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources, reached out today. Uh, she is going to be doing a tour of all the certified local governments, and she was wondering if there, if members would be interested in meeting with her about uh, goals for the city's Summersworth Historic District, uh, and that would be with uh, staff as well. So uh, she was looking to have that in January or February of this year. So. If you guys are interested, we could uh, schedule a joint meeting. I think that would be very good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be sending this application around for those to sign that voted on this, please. So please sign your name. Any other workshop business? No. All right. What about communications and miscellaneous? Do we have any updates from the planner about previous communications? Um, signage, uh, wall, um, other the other items that we had brought up? Shane is uh, working on those. So. I, there seems to be some, I won't say total changes, but things have changed in the signage and some of the storefronts. Some have been removed just a little bit less. So I think someone had said something. Yeah. Um, but the same issues that I've been asking for updates on, I'm just hoping to have an update of the block wall. And I, I can't remember for, all I the forgot things. to do the block wall today mm -hmm. on Myrtle Street. Forgot to ask him. He was at training. So. On winter. Winter, sorry. The window on Grove and uh, Grant. Right, the window. There's like four things. The For signage. Lydia? Lydia's House of Hope? Yes. yes. Yeah. He. Th it's on his list. So. I'll follow up. All right. Any other communication miscellaneous? Um, not G. It was the other place that moved up. Um, oh, Kara. Oh. Uh, Clara has uh, begun to take occupancy of their new location in Portsmouth, and they have vacated, I believe, according to them, vacated here. So things will be moving there. Any other communication or miscellaneous? 
Um, I know next week, October 4th, is the Halloween festival in Summersworth. So I'm, or Harvest Festival. Sorry if I get the name wrong. Pumpkin, Pumpkin Festival. Festival. See, I'm going to go through all the names. <laughs> I will get this. <laughs> I know. Um, so uh, please all attend if you can. That's always a great um, showing for Summersworth. And um, I think that was the only communication and miscellaneous I have tonight. Do we have any motions? Oh, Richard. Um, the next ZBA meeting, which would be one week from tonight, will yes. have 85 Elm Street at it. So um, just something that I expect. I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to speak on that or if I have to recuse myself. I'm kind of curious how that's going to go. Um, but when I have spoken in the past, I was asked if I had permission from the HDC to speak on it. So is that something that's needed if we're going to show up and speak individually? I plan to be there, but I do find that a little weird that an HDC member needs permission to talk. So maybe we should do a motion that we all have permission to talk. I mean, we're, just, we're citizens. Well, you can speak on behalf of an, of an application as a resident, yeah. but typically what I would suggest for a historic district to do is write a, to make a motion to write a letter on behalf of the historic district to be read into the record. Right. Um, and I believe I let all of you know I did write a letter because I was not going to be in town, so that letter is already submitted, and I will be in attendance at the fourth meeting. But um, I guess so we don't confuse, um, I would encourage you all to speak, but maybe as residents then in that case. But um, if this comes up again and we need to, then we can have a motion for everybody to speak on behalf of the HDC or have a person um, designated yeah. for the HDC specifically. Okay. Just so I don't want 12 members to go up and talk about how the HDC is and we, we can do it as individual citizens, if that makes sense. I think we should be able to at least reference that we're an HDC member when we- when Oh, we that speak. no disagreement there. So if that's an issue, if we can't say I'm an HDC member, and I watch this process, because I intend to say, hey, I, I watch this process. Right. I watch this process and worked on this process and watch them change their story. I don't think that they should have any problem with you saying that you're a member and that you were part of this and you're here as a resident. I think the issue is, is, is if somebody refers that they're speaking on behalf of the historic district and there was no uh, motion to speak on behalf of the historic district. Right, and so, so what happens is if we each, each of us go up and speak, we cannot represent ourselves as the Historic District Commission. We are Kim Schoen or Tim Ativi. We are who we are. Historic but we're District not member. The, we're not the commission. Okay. The commission would be represented by a speaker, if so chosen, or a letter, if so read into the record. And the, just a little backstory on why I bring this up. When we had the Winter Street, property appeal to the ZBA, um, I was asked to recuse myself, so I was not sitting on the board for that, but they did want to keep me as a reference for the historic district because I was familiar with the operation and what we look at and so on. So they actually asked me questions during that one in that regard, but I was also asked while I was up there if I had permission to speak on the behalf of the HDC. So. That's why I brought this up this time. I was asked the same question when I spoke about that same case as well. I do have a question that, Michelle, I'm hoping you can track down with maybe the city attorney. I do find it a little bit um, odd that if our city allowed a member to be on both boards that they would work on both boards in the capacity of that board. Like if Richard is on the zoning board, he's going to talk about zoning. He's not going to talk about HDC. Um, and look at it that way, where when he is here representing the HDC, he would talk to and be in that forum. I don't know if anybody's in disagreement of that, but you're there to talk about the issues on that particular thing. So I'd be curious how our city attorney feels on that, because if they keep having people recused, then maybe we need to rethink about having people on both boards then. Mm -hmm. It just, is that seems a little bit. So between now and that meeting we have two choices either the letter that is written or draft a new letter to be read into the record representing us 
or we vote on one speaker that can represent us. I don't see it that way, sorry. I see it as we can make a motion now that says each one of us can represent not the HDC, but certainly what happened at the HDC and our perspective as an HDC member. That's separate and apart from me being Joe, landowner in town, who just thinks this project is a poor planning project. I think there's two different roles. Sure. I mean, if if we're going to, let's say we voted you to be a speaker for this, this is hypothetical, and then you would voice an opinion that we all shared directly to the ZBA representing the Historic District Commission, not Kim Schoen. Kim can represent her ideas because she has intimate knowledge inside the district, inside the commission and out. So that's that's your opinion, not representing the opinion of the board. That's, that's I think, where that lied. That's why I was asked, were you here representing the commission? Meaning anything I said, it might as well, it could have come from your voice or his voice, it doesn't matter, I think not my opinion. I think we certainly should clarify that because I think we should all be at least able to talk about commission business. The way this has worked in the legal context is, say this was a mediation or a board de deliberation, none of us could talk about the board deliberations. We could only talk about our individual positions separate and apart, and that's the concern. I don't see that's a concern. I think that's fine. Right. I, I think we just need to be able to talk about you know, what happened when they came before us, and we all need to be able to, to voice that not necessarily as an opinion of the HDC, because quite frankly, I voted against this project right from the get-go. Um, I was, you know, Richard and I, I think, both voted against it right from the get-go. So our opinions are, are a little different than what the board had initially. So I couldn't represent the HDC because I was not a prevailing member in that vote. And I think that might be, and correct me if I'm incorrect about that, that where is probably why they're asking, are you representing? Because we're a board, we're how many different members are, and we have different things, so they want to make sure what was just um, decided upon by the board itself that whoever speaking can represent that board versus their own, to your point, opinions. But I could be understanding that incorrectly. No, that, I, I think you're right. It, it, you know, not to point at people's professions, but as an attorney, the attorneys represent their clients and they speak on behalf of their client, not on behalf of what they think their client should be have done. That's my point. So a speaker for the commission, whether they were for it or against it, they would speak, if voted on to be a speaker, would speak on behalf of the commission, not their opinion or their personal position. So That's all. Going forward with that, do we want to have someone summarize what the board did so that there's a separate speaker that says this is, you know, look, for those of you who don't know, they came before us three times and we worked with them to make this approval. We gave them the approval. And then they turn around three months later and say, hey, we want something completely different. I, I'm going to try, I'm trying to work on now sort of a memo of law saying I don't think they have standing to do what they're doing. Um, I don't know how that's going to fly because it is a zoning board, it's a town board, the, you know, it's a de novo appeal. But I don't know that they have standing to seek an appeal of, of what they did. So um, it's up to you all, but um, I will be there to speak for the commission if you guys feel like that is who you want to represent. And I can go into that history. It was alluded to in my uh, letter to them how that we had already had a proposal that has been approved. Um, and then I um, laid out to why it was denied and our argument to that. So um, if there's further questions from zoning, I can be there to answer those about our process and what we went through. But it is up to you all. If I mean, like basically, you could almost read your letter into the record because the letter it was very well done. So, Which I am fine. I will have a copy there in case that needs to. I just don't know about time and different yeah, what is it a five-minute limit? What's the limit? Do you know what the limit is? There's no limit because there's, there's a limit here. You have to ask one of the board members. There usually is a limit. It's, it's not always enforced, I believe. Yeah, it's usually five minutes. Okay. I'm fine. I, w I would make a motion that Laura has our authority to be our representative in case that becomes an issue, just so we have it in our record. So I make a motion that in the event there is a speaker needed from the historic district as a representative of the historic district, that it is Laura. I'd second that. As Laura being our speaking representative. All those in favor? Aye. Good. Aye. All right, motion passes on that.
Um, thank you for bringing that up, Richard. That did slip my mind that that was happening <laughs> next week. Um, all right. Any other communication and or miscellaneous? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. And just remember, 7 o'clock. 10 seconds.